going to face a very great elucidated conference in the future. I want to give just four points for the consideration for the welfare of the nation, as well as as key points to be considered at the time of the Congress or the International Conference. Point number one is, the culmination of anybody's consciousness is the person's ability to care, control, perpetuate and to promote people. This is what we call management, this is what we call administration and this is what we call governance. And yoga is the basic science of governance, it is known as Antarajya Paripadana Vidya. How to govern the inner domain is known as yoga vidya. To understand about nature, to understand about man and to govern God himself. Whatever you are seeing in the ministry in the form of health, education, transport, culture, science and various other dimensions like defense, security, everything is having its instinct, driver, planner and proposer in the mind only. And yoga is the only science that can cater to the need of perfect emanation and manifestation of all of these popularities. So I stress that every ruling system should undergo a very great yogic training for increasing ability, purity, amity and various other essential qualities. All these people as preparatory and preventive measures are ruling people. That's what I told in our seminar on political reforms that all political people should undergo a special MBA on pressure management. Like hospital and temple management, MBA on pressure management. Otherwise they have to come to the result of yoga. So yoga is the only way for economic prosperity because whatever we are spending on health issues, in rehabilitation of prisoners, drug addicts, whatever the government is enormously spending on, the resurrection of the society's moral fabric and ethical status that will be totally relieved by yogic practice. Number two, environment will be saved by only yogic practice. Education will be made effective, innovative temper and scientific way of thinking and rationalized way of analyzing and presentation can be boosted only by yoga. The youth potential which is corrupted by disruptivism, rowdyism, terrorism will be harnessed for social productivity only through yoga. So I finally conclude that yoga is the only way for transformation. Now if you say that yoga is having unavoidable such a transformation, half of the people will stop yoga. Because transformation is optional and coercive in yoga, naturally does not occur. Most of the people, those who are practicing yoga and teaching yoga, they are mere yoga teachers and instructors. This is just like producing flock of people known as mere nurses and supporters instead of specialists and super specialists. So I emphasize that this Congress or this community of the state with these essential institutions should result in quality engineering of highly sophisticated and potential personalities in yoga training. In this free conference, I emphasize that there should be a proper workshop to give a proper solution to the society for mass transformation by all possible means. It should be scientifically examined and secularly considered. Recently, Malaysian government, it may be a very, very essential case that the Islam people are saying that it is against the charge rigid principles of Islam. Then the court it finalized the verdict saying that all the essential physical part and exercise part is very much conducive and harmonious to the nation. So, excluding the religious barriers, excluding the religious content, yoga is practicable for all. So, I wish that in the secular India, as the only way for psychological, intellectual and social development, yoga should be introduced as a science. Lot of people are doing, but effectively, I wish, bless and pray, that this conglomeration of the state with the essential organizer should result in the infallible success of this goal. Narayan Narayan.